So I didn't have the grades to get into this school. I barely got over a 2000 on the SAT. I took the SAT do bio exam like three times and I basically guessed on the math 2C exam. When I told my dad I wanted to go to the school, he was like, oh, yeah. I basically grew up with people telling me that I was unqualified or I was never gonna make it. And honestly, they're probably right. Okay, you're a real one if you actually know this, but basically back in the day, our school used this program called Naviance. It was basically this thing where like, it'd be this graph, and it basically showed you where you ranked amongst like everyone else who had gone into the school in the past. So like, literally it'd be like a sea of like greens over here. It was like, I think it was like GPA and like SAT score or something like that. Literally, literally, I cannot joke about this. Literally, I was over here. This was the average person who would get in I was over here, and over here, I lived amongst all my little friends. I knew that my grades were never going to get me in, and so I thought about what I could change or what I had control over, and those were my essays. And honestly, I freaking went ham on them. Just for old time's sake, I'm going to print this bad boy. Alright, so we got it here. My 150 word and my 500 word. Honestly, don't judge me. This got me into the school. This kid, I was dumb in school. And honestly, this got me in there, so I'm pretty proud. Uh, but I'm gonna first read the 150 word, and then I'm gonna read my 500 word. So here it goes. At 5'9 and 125 pounds, I hardly pose a menacing figure on the soccer field. Yet I am the starting midfielder on my school's varsity soccer team. Most players who play my position have considerable advantages over me in height and weight. That is probably why most teams we play tend to underestimate the strength of our school's team. And that underestimation is my advantage in the first half of a game. For the second half, I use my speed and endurance to control the play at midfield. Making varsity and earning my position on the team are some of my best achievements in high school but my greatest achievement so far has been disproving inaccurate assumptions about me. I hope to continue doing more of that in the future. Playing soccer has, at the very least, shown me that surpassing expectations can be done. In marketing jargon, an alpha consumer is someone who by being the first to purchase a product, validates it and starts a buying trend. When I was a child, I was the farthest thing from an alpha. I would beg my mother to buy me a particular Lego set or Hot Wheels race car, not because I wanted to be the first to have it, but because I didn't want to be the only kid who didn't have it. I was the one whom toy manufacturers targeted in their TV commercials. It did not matter what the toy was. All I had to see was a group of kids playing with it with unbridled zeal and I needed it right away. Years later, I developed an immunity to commercials but I am still susceptible to the whims and trends that tend to dominate my peers. Luckily, I am not a teenager with a lot of disposable income or I would have bought every smartphone that came on the market. In actuality, I have never had a cell phone until quite recently when the iPhone 5 came out, a new Apple product offering that enabled me to snap up an iPhone 4 for 99 cents, though a two year activation contract was required which just proves that every deal comes with a catch. The point I am trying to make is that I am a wary consumer by necessity. I may come from middle income in a Jersey suburb, but we have lived during a depressed economy and my parents have taught me frugality. However, the school I go to seems to have a lot of kids who act as if they live in Versailles during the reign of Louis XIV. Simply put, there are rich kids in my school who have no problem promptly displaying the latest teenage toy. I begrudge no one for his or her indulgence. I just think that my financial situation has allowed me to be more of an observer than a purchaser. Say what you will about the diminishing value of Facebook stock. Social media influences my generation's purchasing habits more than print ads, TV spots, and celebrity endorsements put together. 
And no, those Facebook ads do not really work. What really works is a kid taking a photo or video of someone or something, posting it on the internet along with some hip hop sounding text, and assuming the kid is an alpha, the photo or video will go viral. My generation buys in bulk, but not in the way our parents do. I know of no teenager with a Costco membership, but collectively, we teenagers will buy a bulk of a hot commodity. That paradigm will likely change by the time we become parents. But who knows for sure? How does one predict a future marketing trend? I may never go from being a wary consumer to an alpha consumer. Yet, if I study well in college, I hope to learn how to be more than just a consumer in the business world. So basically, I submitted these and I was waiting for my result um, for early decision. And I just remember this, it was December 15th. That's when the early decision results were coming out and the bell rang and we were meeting outside the high school. And my friend that, that was also in our friend group, his mom calls him. And she's like, you got into the school. Everyone's super excited. Everyone's celebrating, everyone gathering over him. And then they remember, the, they remember that I applied too. And they look at me and I'm like freaking out. I'm like calling my mom. I call her, I'm like, Amma, did I get the result? Is there anything in the mail? She's like, nothing's in the mail. She's literally like turning this mailbox like inside out. The only thing she found in there was literally a postcard from Carnegie Mellon saying that I should visit. And I was like, does that basically mean I got in? And then like, I freaked out. It was not like an official, you know, acceptance letter. And I legit go home crying. I legit ran home crying. And then like when I get home, I looked at, I like look at the mailbox like three more times. I mean, it was insane. I like go in, I'm like freaking out, I'm like super anxious. And I freaking call the admissions office. So I call the admissions office. I freaking call the admissions office. And I'm like, hi, my name is Peter, probably under my Korean name. You know, I applied early decision. Um, you know, results were supposed to come out today. Is there anything? And they're like, sorry, what, what, sorry, what was your last name? I was like, W-E-O-N. She's like, oh, Peter, we actually just made your decision today. And I was like, what? Literally, the result was supposed to come out today. What do you mean the result came out today? She's like, yeah, we actually just made the decision. And so we're gonna send out the mail and you're just gonna have to wait for it. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Um, I was like, ma'am, I'm really sorry. Like, is there any way you can tell me over the phone? I was like, when should I expect this? And she was like, in about one to two weeks. And I was like, ma'am, I'm so sorry. Do you know that regular decisions are due in a couple weeks? And she's like, I understand. I was like literally trying to like read through her vibe. I was trying to read through her, you know, intonations or whatever to see if that was a yes or a no. I legit couldn't get it. And she was like, okay, good luck. And so literally over the next two weeks, I had to wait and make a decision. Am I literally going to like start writing regular application decisions? Like I only wrote one essay and that was for Carnegie Mellon. What I basically decided to do is not apply for any other school. And that was probably a horrible decision. If you're applying to schools this year, probably have some backups. Don't follow my lead. This was a horrible decision. Um, and then basically, you know, I wait. I remember it was like a Friday night. No, no, it was a Thursday night, midnight. The next day, regular apps were due. So if I didn't get into the school, I don't know what I was gonna do. I literally did not write any other, you know, common app essays or whatever like that. I checked that night. I think it was called like, where am I in the process or something like this, this like janky website. I click it and it says accepted. All that to say, if you go to Tenafly High School, there will be one green dot. If you go to Carnegie Mellon, if you're applying to Carnegie Mellon, there will be one green dot over here. This ain't red no more. This ain't red. But I basically gave hope to those <laughs> who feel like they have no shot. Hey, thanks for watching. I think we also just hit over 100 subscribers, so I really appreciate it. 
be sure to subscribe. I launch a video every Sunday and uh, I'm gonna try telling more stories of this, like where it's like, you know, a story of an unqualified person getting into something. You know, my life is basically a story of grace and um, just favor. So I wanna tell more of this. So be sure to subscribe and uh, I'll see you soon. At 5'9", 